Uh, please put it in writing. Uh, there are forms back with the supervisors in the checklist, blind forms, to help you uh, create a written motion. All you need to do is to approach the mic, say, Mr. Moderator, I have a motion. I'll walk out and meet you and take the motion from you and read the written motion. It's important, again, to have motions in writing so that we get a clear record and so that we can be very clear with our members of this body what it is that we're asking to do to vote. Um, the, uh, in years past, we've conducted the swearing in set of ceremony uh, for new uh, town officials shortly after I read the results, or after the moderator read the results of the um, uh, balloting. Uh, the select board has asked us to do it under our time to take other matters. Uh, what I would encourage, if you are a newly elected board member or a town official, please stay. Um, but I would also encourage, uh, there are going to be a couple of presentations at the end of the meeting, um, and you're not legally obligated to stay, but if you would choose to stay, I think recognizing both our outgoing town officials, but also incoming <coughs> town officials. These are men and women who are uh, giving up a fair amount of their personal time to uh, make our community more better. Uh, so recognizing them is, is a nice thing to do. We needed four tellers this morning. I think four tellers will be enough for us. Um, Judy Nelson, Bill Irvin, Larry Larkin, and Neil Flynn agreed to be tellers. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about voting procedures um, uh, as we go. Last thing, I really hope you enjoy your involvement in this town meeting. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a unique tradition. It's not a good in our town, but uh, this is a, a remarkable chance to be directly engaged as voters in the legislative process. And so it's a, uh, I hope that you find it enjoyable. Um, any questions? All right, with that, I'll be trying to Yes. Charlie, I'm having trouble. Sometimes you're cutting in and out on the mic. I'm trying to get the hand turned out. Okay, I'll try to stay in on the mic. Thank you. I'm going to read the results of the school ballot first and then the results of the town ballot. <coughs> Article 1, School District Moderator, Charles Putnam, 493, Joe Powell at 6. Article 2, School District Clerk, Corey Jones, 461. Article 3, School District Treasurer, Judy Berry, 242, Suzanne Mountain, 143, Paula Woolley, 21. I find that Judy Berry is the winner of that race. Article 4, School Board. It's the top two vote getters. Um, Brent Rose, 165, Tom Kunz, 293, Emily Leach, 333, Jim Jalbert, 2, Paula Woolley, 2. I find that Emily Leach and Tom Kunz are the winners of that race. Article 5. Uh, under SB2 was the operating budget for the school district. Um, 357, yes, 178, no, that uh, part of the carry. Article 6, the uh, collective bargaining cost items. Um, 372, yes, 190, no, I find that that one carries. Uh, Article 7, roof replacement. 422, yes, 137, no, that article also carried. Article 8, to establish, I'm sorry, to raise and appropriate a sum for the Rollinsford School, School Building Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. 394, yes, 165, no, that was also carried. Article 9, to see if the, um, to establish a regular education tuition expendable trust fund. Uh, 387, yes, 169, no, uh, I find that that one. On the town ballot, select board member and overseer of the board, um, Denise Knowles, 441. There were 23 various write-ins. I'm not going to be reading some of the uh, some of the write-ins. For town moderator, uh, Charles Putnam, 503, Joe Cowett, 6. Supervisor of the checklist, Angela Matthews, 450. Town clerk, Kate Nesman, 501. Town Treasurer, Vern Crozier, 327, Paul Zilli, 176, and I'm the Mr. Crozier is on that race. Uh, for Chief of the Fire Department, Mark Rutherford, 468. For Budget Committee, Jody Lavoie Cairns, uh, 240, Paul Cass, 246, Vern Crozier, 168, 
Edmund Jansen, 226, D. Neepock, 203, Jonathan Ordway, 292. I find clear that uh, Mr. Ordway, Mr. Cass, and Ms. DeVoy Carnes are the winners of that race. For trustee of trust funds, Salman Perry, 427. Trustee of the library, Emily Clerk, em, I'm sorry, Emily Cork, 437. For trustee of the library for a different term, so a different race, Tamara Nijakowski, 418. For trustee of the cemetery, Mark Kucher, 492. Turning to the articles, worn articles on the ballot, uh, Article 2, Keno, 352, yes. 203 no. I finally declare that Article 2 passed. <coughs> Article 3, SB 2 by petition. Yes, 354. No, 212. That required a three fifths majority to pass, and I finally declare that that passed as well. Keep it closer to, to. Is this good? Yeah. All right. I'll start again. But the select board and the budget committee are in complete agreement with regard to the overall budget amounts that you see in the complete town warrant. So the operating budget and the individual warrant articles. We're in disagreement over where we would see some of the road maintenance dollars. The other uh, item that I would like to point out is that the tax effort represented by the entire uh, warrant, the operating budget and the individual warrant articles, maintains a, a level of tax effort with regard to last, the current year, the last tax bill. So that means, as a matter of fact, it's probably a little bit lower. So the municipal part of the tax rate should stay the same. The other thing that's important to note is that, and I don't want this to get lost, is that the state gave us an additional $50,000 for road uh, maintenance this year. 
that's had something to do with the Volkswagen settlement money that the state received, and it chose to return some of it to towns and municipalities based on the proportion that we normally get. So we normally get about 57,000, something like that, and we get an additional almost 50,000. So that's why you see a combined road maintenance uh, budget of $325,000. It would not have been um, this high, and, and we'll, we probably will not see it this high next year either. So what is the source of the disagreement between the Budget Committee and the Select Board on where this, these amounts reside? The Board presented a budget where all of our road maintenance was in the operating budget, and we've been signaling this for a number of years. At town meeting, at uh, the public hearing on the budget, at our own board meetings, the Board has been marching towards putting uh, road maintenance entirely within the operating budget. The Budget Committee would like to see some of it as a separate warrant article, not all of it, to some of it. Not sure why the amount, because we had mentioned that the road contract this year would, luck, would likely be around $300,000. <clears> the board presented the budget with the $325,000 in the operating budget. The budget committee reduced it by $250,000. The budget committee cannot create a warrant article. It's not within their statutory obligations. So they engineered the petition warrant article after the meeting and that's sort of where we stand. Let me give you the reasons why the board would like to see it in the operating budget. But please know, please know, no matter what, we're going to have the $325,000 to spend on the road board. Whether it's all in the operating budget, or some of it's in the operating budget and some of it is in that warrant, we're going to be spending the $325,000 on the roads. Now, I don't believe that's in question, unless you all do something really weird. <laughs> so, again, here are some of our reasons. The roads are an existing asset for the town. The expenses associated with maintaining these roads are recurring. They happen every single year. Just like salaries, fringe benefits, supplies, equipment repair. Every year. I'm going to show you a graph. I believe this was available out back, if some of you got to see this. These are the budgets uh, for road maintenance since 1991. And you can see the, the blue is the amount of road maintenance that's been in the uh, operating budget. And the red has been the amount that's been in a town warrant, a separate warrant. And the last blue line is where the board proposed it, that it would all be in the operating budget. You can see that the recent boards have made a singular effort to boost the amount of money that we are spending to try to maintain the roads. They're an expensive asset. We're doing the best we can, you know, without going, uh, without, you know, having a debilitating effect on our tax rate. Deleterious is probably a better word. So, as you can see, the budget has never been either all in the operating budget or all in a separate warrant. We've been spending from both, and the board saw no particular advantage to doing that, to having some in the warrant and some in the operating budget. And so we have, um, you know, our proposal is to have them all in the operating budget. And again, the 250000 that's in the separate warrant doesn't cover what we expect to be a $300,000 road contract. We've been signaling for a number of years that we wanted to do this, the only objection that we heard from this was from some of the budget, enough of the budget committee members who chose to vote the way they did. There are no state statutes that regulate what must be in the operating budget versus what's in the warrants. That decision is left up to the select boards, and the select board made that decision and recommendation. Since 1991, there's never been a contention about accepting the road warrants. The towns have always, you know, always accepted the road warrants. Um, <clears throat> which is a very good thing. We have a 10-year road plan, so what we do on our roads, we'd like to think is completely open and transparent to all of us. We update it every year. Unfortunately, we did not update it in 2017 because we were absent a road agent during a critical time. But we will be updating again very soon in 2018. Um, we are using that plan. We didn't change it, so we just went forward with it. So the plan is 
to concentrate on our two de uh, developments, uh, Robert's Farm and uh, the Woodlands. So we will be completing them both over the next two years. And the only other comment I would have to make is that this is not a leading edge budgetary idea for the towns of Farmington, Barrington, Lee budget in this way. So for those reasons, the board would like to recommend that this body restore $250,000 to the operating budget that we would put in road maintenance. And when it comes time to address the separate road for an article, we would then recommend that we reduce that to $1. Thank you. Um, based on Article 5, we begin in so that persons later on know what they're voting on. There appears to be a dispute between the uh, select board and, some, and the budget uh, committee. Um, but the budget itself is what Board Article 5 is about. So you'll hear a lot about this dispute, I think, in, in comments. But just remember, when we come to the vote, we're talking about the entire town budget. Mr. Crozier. May I approach the podium, please? You may, yes. Good morning. My name is Fern Crozier. I am, was, or soon to be was, a member of the Budget Committee. So I was sort of involved in this process. I'd sort of like to get a sense of the body, if we can do that first. First of all, is there anybody here who does not believe we need to spend tax dollars to repair and maintain the roads? Anybody? Well, I'm going to assume that that means we're in agreement. Is there anybody here who does not believe it's going to cost at least a quarter of a million dollars or more to repair and maintain the roads? I guess we're in agreement, right? Is there anyone here who believes that after we vote for a commitment to repair and maintain the roads, that it is perfectly all right to spend that money on something else? No. Okay. A little history here. The members of the budget committee asked the select board representative why money to repair the roads was in the operating budget and we were told it allowed for flexibility and ease of accounting. Despite the fact that for decades road repair warrant articles were separate from the operating budget. But 39 years, I believe, was one bit of information that was given to us. The members of the Budget Committee then asked the Board of Selectmen and its representative, would they consider a separate warrant article for this request like it had been done in the past? They declined. Since money in the operating budget, and this is a key point, can be used for anything within the operating budget. You can move stuff from one line item to another. It was conceivable our commitment today could be used for totally unrelated purposes. I'm not saying they would, but I'm saying they could. And asking the taxpayers to trust the buck or a selectman is not how municipal budgeting authorization is done. It requires specific approval to spend money and a vote and approval from this, the body. The Budget Committee then, by majority vote, reduced the operating budget by $250,000, which was perfectly legal and within the authority of the Budget Committee and under RSA 32. Because private citizens felt the roads needed attention, just like I'm sure you do, and it would be difficult for the town to move money within the operating budget to cover that $250,000. Bearing in mind, the Board of Selectmen have the authority to move money within the operating budget. Those private citizens, including myself, initiated the Warren article, which will be Article 14 later, that action by private citizens was also legal, despite some comments that were made out there in social media land. So the issue before us is this. 
We believe the roads need to be repaired and, and they require maintenance. There's no doubt about that. We asked, I asked you before, nobody said, no, I don't believe that. It will probably take $250,000 or more to accomplish that goal. And we're agreed on that. If we want to guarantee that that money that you authorize, that you will have to raise through your taxes, will be spent on roads, the best purpose to achieve that, the best method to achieve that process, is through that Warren article and to not return it to the operating budget. Let's go with tradition. It's been 40 years. We've done it. This should stand or fall on its own merits as a separate Warren article. And that's all I have to say, except for we have a petition for private. Okay. Uh, that comes to me what you call for. Okay, well, I just want you know it's coming. Okay. I, I'm not surprised that I'll be ready. I'm ready and waiting. Perfect. Perfect comment on Article 5. Ms. Knowles? Denise Knowles, 501 Silver Street. I am speaking as a private citizen. Okay, and would you, if, not your fault, me? No, um, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. For a four, maybe. Where's my sound guy when I need it? Um, yeah, go ahead and try that. And Ms. Knowles, if you'd like to turn that to face the legislative body, you may, if, you, if it's more comfortable to face the selected I'll quit. Promise. Okay. Um, did you get my address, 501 Silver Street? Thank you. I am here to um, propose an amendment to the budget of, for Article 5 to increase it back to 250000 to restore to the budget the general municipal operations to the amount of originally recommended by the select board, which would make it... Um, Two million two oh nine eight sixty, putting two hundred fifty thousand back into the uh, paving. So, uh, motion to amend Article Five by Ms. Knowles. Is there a second? And then I'll read it. A second by Ms. Salvati. Um, to amend Article 5 by striking one million nine hundred and fifty nine eight sixty in the first sentence and replacing that number with 2,209,860 uh, with the purpose of restoring the budget for uh, general municipal operations in the amount recommended by the select board. So we are in discussion on the um, proposed amendment to Article 5. Is there a debate on that? Ms. St. Hilaire? Kim St. Hilaire, 14 Virgin Way. So I, I want to um, agree that everything that Mr. Berger said was accurate. Um, for, for almost 40 years, we've been funding our road resurfacing in this manner. And for almost 40 years, we've had that guarantee. We've had that guarantee that those dollars are going to be spent on our roads. By putting this money back into the operating budget, not this board and not future boards. Well, turn up that mic. People in the back can't hear you. Yeah, we're having difficulty with feedback, Mr. Turgeon. Um, we're going to make it now. is accurate. Um, once we put this money into the operating budget, we give up our guarantee that those dollars will be spent on our roads. This board says that they will guarantee it, and, and I accept that. But can we guarantee that future boards will do this? Um, I personally voted not to keep the money in the operating budget because I want to keep that guarantee. I want to ensure that all of that $250,000 is used for road resurfacing. We give up that guarantee by putting it in the operating budget. So I will not vote for this amended budget. Mr. 
Bourbon. And then I've, uh, Ms. Hewitt has asked for a minute. Good morning, Bill Irving, uh, 77 Rollins Road. I believe the select board is entrusted with the proper financial operation of the town, and they have the best ability to take care of uh, the town finances. This group is a uh, legislative body, but it meets once a year. If something happens during the year, um, this group can't easily come back together to make the changes and adjustments to properly manage the town budget. Um, you know, there's been much said about making sure the money is used for the roads, and the select board knows that. They, they know that's the intent, but things will happen, and I believe they need the ability, the flexibility to manage the money and to move it if they need to, and it has to be for something catastrophic to address the issues of the town. The proper remedy for us as legislatures, if they do not do that, is to boot them out of office. Um, not simply to uh, handcuff them and tie their hands and say, you know, we have to do this um, and this is the only way to do it. I believe further a capital item, as this has been alleged to be, um, is a one-time cost. Road maintenance is recurring. It belongs in the operating system and it belongs with the ability of the select board to manage that money for the purpose that we told them it's for, which is for the roads uh, maintenance of the town. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Irving. I'm going to recognize Ms. Hewitt for a brief um, response and then um, Ms. Hanson and Lucy, I think you need to get in line. So, with regard to trusting the select board, uh, that trust, you, you, do, you do have trust in the select board, or you, you, you do need trust in the select board, or we need to be trusted, however you look at it. Because even though the money, what if the money is in a road warranty, we don't have to spend it. Period. We had a road, we had a warrant article last year for a truck for the highway department. We did not buy it. So you are trusting us to manage the funds of the town appropriately, which we hope we have been doing across the years. And we would do it in, and we would continue to do so. The other thing, just as a point of information, the contract for the road is likely to be executed within the next two or three weeks, which means that most of that entire money is going to be expended or tied up and cumbered very quickly. So, you know, whether it's in the operating budget or the road one, or really something here and something there, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it uh, more accessible, more uh, the ability to understand how much we're spending on roads every year. It's a recurring expense like supplies, like fringe benefits, like salaries, and the equipment in here. We maintain the roads, we maintain the roads, we maintain the roads. We've been doing it every year for many, many moons. Thank you. Ms. Hanson? Lorraine Hanson, 11 Watson Lane. I think we've heard the word trust a few times this morning, and I think that's really the key here. The, it is a matter of trust. We have entrusted our select board to, to manage our town affairs, and I don't think that over the years they have failed to do that, and I think that over the more recent years they've tried very hard to try to look at everything that we need to keep our town assets at the best level possible. They've worked on 10-year plans with Stratford County Regional Planning in order to try to figure out what do we need to do to keep our roads and culverts maintained. They've been doing all sorts of things along that line over the past few years. This is really the key to keeping the town running smoothly. To handcuff them because someone is afraid that they're not going to use the money as it should be used is a very strange idea. I don't think there's any history of our town fathers and mothers not doing that appropriately over the years. I think that we have to understand there is no quote unquote slush fund, which I hear often. That is not a slush fund. If something arises as 
has been suggested that's catastrophic, then in that event, of course, they need to have the ability to move the money from one place to another. That would be helpful. For instance, I know the year that one of the culverts broke, they had to do some of that work. Otherwise, we're stuck with special meetings and we're stuck with the idea of having to make uh, additional appropriations throughout the year to manage what needs to be done. Again, it's a matter of trust, and I think we should trust our select board to do what's necessary. Thank you. Kelly Anderson, 3 Watson Lane. Um, there, I just would like some clarification if we can get it. We've heard it's, um, Vern has said, you know, social media has said this is legal. I've read it's illegal. Is there anybody here that can clarify to us today that um, this is legal or illegal? Is that something that town council is prepared to weigh in on? Certainly. Um, so, um, Mr. Attorney Baum, uh, who is representing the town, uh, is present at the meeting. He's not a um, uh, resident of Rollinsford. Uh, my practice as moderator is to allow persons who are not Rollinsford residents who have spe specialized information that may be helpful to the body uh, to speak before the body. Is there any objection to that? Mr. Baum? Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Um, my name is Kevin Ball. I'm an attorney. I work with uh, Steve Roberts, who would typically be here if he was unable to be here today. Um, I'm not surprised I'm up here. I expected I would be. Uh, the question is whether the, the procedure of the Warren article was legal. Uh, we have advised uh, the select board that the process was, was not legal. And it was for this reason. Um, while citizens may um, may petition a warrant article. In this case, uh, as you can see from, if you look at the petition warrant article, the main proponents are were the members of the um, were members of the budget committee, um, and I, I don't say that to to call them out. But when you look at that in conjunction with um, taking this money away, it, we feel it's clearly a concerted effort. Um, or an organized effort to, um, which takes away the board of the select boards, um, the the select boards uh, statutory jurisdiction under under the budget. Uh, we do not believe that the this was a proper uh, procedure. Uh, unfortunately, the the remedy in that case would have been just litigation within the town, uh, which. The, board, the select board was understandably not eager to do. Um, so with respect to the, the actual, the approach, um, we did not feel it was legal and we think that the uh, New Hampshire Supreme Court decisions uh, support that and if we were forced to go to, um, to court, uh, the, board of, the select board would prevail. Um, again, they chose not to do that and so um, that's why we're in the position we are here today, um, where it is, it's before the border, before the voters, I'm sorry, um, uh, to try to rectify that. Now, to clarify, we think that if the vote is made today, that will be, you know, legal. The process to get here, um, we, we don't believe was the proper procedure, but again, the, the select board chose uh, to avoid intertown litigation um, and is, is proposing this approach instead. Thank you. Mr. Putnam? Lucy Putnam, 85 Sligo Road. So um, from what I just understood from Attorney Baum, the procedure that was used to pull the money out of the warrant article and put it into a separate warrant article, sorry, pull it out of the budget and put it into a separate warrant article was not proper procedure and could have been litigated by the town against 
the petition article. Therefore, I am, for all many other reasons, but for that reason also, am not in favor. Uh, I am in favor of restoring this money to the budget. Thank you. Donald Thomas, 11 Watson Lane. Uh, <clears throat> my understanding here is that uh, there are a lot of different items in the budget, and the point has been raised that items and monies uh, in the budget for a particular line can be moved to another line. Uh, for some reason, the road fund is different from all others, we're concerned about that being misappropriated. If we're so concerned about that being misappropriated, why aren't we concerned about all the other items in the budget that we give the select board the ability to, to deal with? And why don't we have everything on warrant articles rather than in the budget? Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Jansen? I read Jansen and for years I was worried about road budgets and so forth. Uh, okay. So, as I said, for years I was worried about road budgets. Uh, that's an interesting chart there because uh, I'm the one that gets blamed for spending money now on roads because they said I don't like change. And if you look at that graph, you can see what happened when I left. <laughs> now, it's, it's not that, it's not quite that simple though. Uh, I don't know how we were able to keep that so level for so many years, but we did. I, I as an individual with my conservative financial philosophy, like uh, capital items. It's fixed, and first of all, I liked it for years as a selectman when we went and started talking to contractors and so forth about what it's going to be. We said, you got to have a certain dollars for that, and it's not going to be changed because they voted this a warrant article at town meeting, and we're constrained by that, and if you want more than that, you, we'll go as far as we can. We'll stop when we run out of money, so that's really what, what happened. We were putting a certain amount of money in the budget and we then did whatever we thought was most uh, pressing. And of course, some things didn't get done for another year or so, I, I would admit. But some of this problem though, I, it's not my uh, credit for this. We like what you're talking about now for Heritage and uh, Moses Carr, which I keep bitching about because I'm a property owner on that road. And since 88, uh, we did have a couple of emergency projects over there, but we haven't done anything for, uh, you know, over 25 years on that road. And that's way too long to wait. And so the money you're asking for now for this year, much of that's going to probably end up now over there. We never had to spend any money over there before. So our budget, road budget is increasing because we have more miles of road and we were, we've lived for 25 years or so on the original constructed road, but now they face more. So I'm, it's got to go up some, I, I fully admit. But I always, well, I'm concerned here, not just uh, saying we want to make sure the money's been spent on the roads. Road, uh, we can also though, as a town, Fluckman can, if they, uh, the contractor comes in and says, oh, well, it's just like I'm getting a house roof put on, and they told me if I, we buy the shingles in the next couple of weeks, we're going to save 11% because the cost of roofing shingles are going up 11%. When you're talking to a contractor, that's the way life goes, and, and, and we're going to see more of these kinds of uh, cost. But 
the the uh, such, uh, I always wanted to say when you come in, Mr. Contractor, you better not have a bunch of overhead. If you need more culverts or whatever, make sure you considered all that and you planned this project very well. So I always thought that by putting it in a capital budget, it gave the stockman some power to, uh, stronger power to negotiate. And that's all our town officials need, all the power they can to negotiate with all these contractors. And, and, and most of this stuff that we're getting these big increases or because of outside contractors are demanding more money. And so that was, in, in this particular case, I'm always looking at the bottom line budget though. I, uh, what, what's bothered me this year with this budget, the selectmen have reduced the total budget compared to last year by over a million dollars, one million ninety-five thousand. Yeah. So, Mr. Jansen, I'm going to interrupt you and find that at this time, comments on the budget as a whole are out of order because we're in debate on a proposed amendment to the budget. Okay. So, uh, but you're welcome to return when we uh, okay, open general debate. I have a couple of points. Okay, thank you. Anyhow, I think that this year, since uh, we've got the legal council on one thing and another, I don't like these procedures, but it's not, the bottom line is not going to change, whichever we go with, unfortunately. Byrne would say, well, that's academic, but, uh, so. Thank you, Mr. Let's get on with it. Okay, Mr. Kunz. So we're in debate on a proposed amendment to restore a sum of money to the uh, town budget. Mr. Kunz. Uh, Tom Kunz, 413 Stockdale. I'm in support of the amendment. Um, I think this whole thing is just ridiculous. I, I don't see the logic because when we had this meeting earlier on this this topic, and one of the comments made earlier was, you know, why aren't we just putting everything into a separate warrant? If the select board needs to get copy paper, we should have that as warrant number 360. I mean, this is just where do you stop? And you know, it is a matter of trust. If we're going to elect people to offices, we should be doing so saying, okay, well, this is your job. This is your authority. Just do it. Um, I don't really think we want to be running out to uh, schedule, you know, emergency meetings every time, you know, something goes wrong because we've taken all of the authority away from our select board. That's what this is about. This is nothing more than uh, folks concerned that people aren't spending money the way it should be. It wouldn't matter if this was a dollar or $250,000. Um, I, I don't see any evidence either that there has been uh, you know, a misappropriation of funds in the past. What brings this on? I just, if this is, going to become nothing more than a, an enormous inconvenience. Folks are going to be wondering why it is we're, we're going to meetings every Saturday um, to discuss appropriations of, of funds. I think that we, we either have to elect people to positions to give them, with our trust, to give them the authority to do what we've asked them to do. And that's why I think that we, we need to uh, agree with this amendment, to put the money back in the budget, uh, you know, if, if there's some evidence that, again, that funds are being misappropriated by our select board, then this is the time where that needs to be presented. But I haven't, I haven't heard a thing. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Mr. Meaghan? Robert Meaghan, 457 Locust Street. Robert Meaghan, 457 Locust Street. I keep hearing the word misappropriated. If you give people the ability to spend the money on whatever they want, it's not misappropriated. It's bad management on our behalf. When you have money that's dedicated, and I've seen this at state, federal, and local level in cases that I've worked, 
both as chairman of Force Protection Working Group and as an IG inspector and as a, an investigator. Government at all level, if they get a chance, they put the money where they think is the best deal. So halfway through the year, something comes up, they spend the money on that. Part of what was recommended in this year's evaluation was they look at a town manager to prioritize so that this stuff wasn't coming in. Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. And I see nothing wrong with putting this into a separate item. If people like it, great. If they don't, they vote it down. But uh, we also got a legal opinion from a legal firm that also wasted 100000 roughly, of our money going to uh, fighting that battle over the 75 acres, which we eventually wound up buying here. That was supposed to be a great lawsuit, and they were going to do whatever. The bottom line is lawyers all have separate opinions. That's this gentleman's opinion. The last time they gave us an opinion, it cost us about 100 grand. I Congratulate the select board for not going to court on this, but let the people vote and let's go from here. Thank you. And I don't want to pressure anybody, but we are almost an hour in. We have a 19, uh, 19 article ballot, a warrant to get through. Caroline Kendall, 20 Silver Lane. I just want to suggest to this body that perhaps the conversation should not be around where the money should go, but perhaps process and validating a process. Because here we are in 2018, but if we validate what is perhaps not a legal process, which has been suggested or, or affirmed by town council, then if we are to validate an improper process, then that, that holds not just for 2018, but that holds for every year going forward. So I would suggest that individually, we, we, we vote on this amendment for 2018 and how you feel about those people who are making this decision about this money, but understand also that this vote carries weight in perpetuity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kendall. I think we're about, okay. Uh, Ms. St. Hilaire, I'm going to recognize and then I'll see if we're ready for the vote. Ms. St. Hilaire. Kim St. Hilaire, 14 Turgeon Way. I was one of the 25 people who signed the petition um, to create a separate warrant article for $250,000 for the roads. And I'm also a budget committee member. And I, I'm actually kind of offended that I'm treated as a budget committee member and not a resident. Um, you know, people are implying that there was an organized effort by the budget committee to do this. But in fact, I was a quarter of the people that signed that petition. And if you look at some of the other petitions, um, there's obviously, for example, the town manager petition, there's obviously organized efforts in a lot of these petitions, but it does not make them illegal. So personally, I'd like to be treated like a resident and not a budget committee member. And I'm often reminded when I speak as a budget committee member that I'm not the budget committee. So people need to think about whether or not this is really a budget committee action or 25 individual residents Thank you. Thank you, Carol. to respond, and I would urge everybody at this point not to repeat arguments that have previously been made. I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm reluctant to say what I'm about to say only because it, it reinforces uh, an issue that I would prefer not to have to, I would prefer not to deal with. But nonetheless, if you look at the videos of the budget committee meeting, and also the minutes. It will reflect that it was the intent of the budget committee members to reduce the budget by $250,000 and then to create a petition warrant article. That was the stated purpose of the budget committee members who did that. It's on video. They, they were waiving the petition. They signed it as soon as the meeting adjourned. So budget committee member citizen, I don't know, but it was clearly seemed to me, not an attorney, that the intent of those budget committee members was to engineer what could engineer. Move the question. Okay, so a, a motion, motion to make call, call the question on the proposed amendment to Article 5. Um, I have a request for a secret ballot, so before I summarize the, um, uh, summarize the proposed amendment for you, 
and you go to get your uh, paper ballots and uh, you can touch on that. I just want to confirm that these five persons are present in the room. And I apologize in advance uh, for failing eyesight um, uh, and ways that I'll mispronounce people's names. So, Catherine Lamb. Present. Uh, B.J. Libby. Thank you. Armin Turgeon. Thank you. Um, Joan Vieira. Joan Vieira. Oh, I'm sorry. Joan Vieira. Thank you. And June Mo Mosher. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we will have a secret ballot. The process will be to go to the supervisors, show the red card, uh, and pick up a paper ballot. Let me summarize for you what a yes means and what a no means. Uh, there is a proposed amendment. There is a proposed amendment to restore a sum of money uh, that was pre that was in the town budget as proposed by the board of selection, approximately two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the purpose of funding a road maintenance line. A yes vote is to restore that money. A no vote is to leave the budget as it stands. Okay. Are there any questions about the amendment? I find yes. Um, in restoring the money back into the amount that was in the I think that that has been covered in the in the debate. All right, uh, the polls are open. <laughs>
reopen the uh, debate on the Article 5 on the town budget. Are there any, while they're counting the uh, balance on the amendment, I know that the amendment has everybody's attention, but I also know that there were a couple of people that I encouraged to save their comments for the budget as a whole. Okay, so I think we will recess again briefly while um, the votes are counted, and then we'll probably go into the vote on the
in debate on Article 5 as amended, that is the town budget uh, as amended uh, by the vote just taken. Is there any further debate? I'm about to call for the vote on uh, Article 5, the town budget. I have the town budget. So, please get out your red card. If you are in favor of adopting Article 5 as amended, please raise your red card. Go ahead and put them down. If you are opposed to adopting Article 5 as amended, so it's close enough that I will ask for the tellers to, to do a count, please put your cards back down. And we're going to repeat the process, but this time please leave your card up uh, so that the tellers can count it. If you are standing in the back of the room, Please uh, help the tellers by moving to one side of the doors or the other uh, and keeping your card up. All right, so those in favor of adopting Article 5 as amended, please raise your card and leave it up. Thank you. Please put your cards down. Those opposed to adopting Article 5 as amended, please raise your card and hold it up. Thank you. Vote, you may play, take your cards now, thank you. Uh, the vote on Article 5 as amended, yes, 77, no, 31. I find that Article 5 as amended carries. I believe there is a motion to restrict reconsideration. Mr. Crozier has submitted a motion uh, that the vote previously taken uh, not be subject to reconsideration, um, and that's pursuant to a state statute, RSA 40 colon 10, uh, subdivision 1. Is there a second for that motion? Nancy Dion. Nancy Dion. And 
just so I understand, it's to, to affect Article 5 only. Is there any discussion on the motion to restrict reconsideration on Article 5? I'm going to ask for, um, uh, unless there is any debate, I don't think there will be. Those in favor, Ms. Leopold? Um, just a question. Can you please um, explain what restrict means in this purpose? question is, what does it mean to restrict reconsideration? This is a legislative body. Um, we don't follow strict Roberts rules of order anymore. Um, but one of, the, one of the choices that a body can make is it's say at 10 o'clock, they vote to approve the uh, town budget. And at 1 o'clock, um, uh, the people left in the hall say, hey, I have a great idea. We move to reconsider our vote on Article 5. Um, that is permitted uh, under our normal rules of procedure. What um, a motion to restrict reconsideration does is to say uh, that later on in the meeting, we can't change our minds. We ready for a vote? Those in favor of the motion to restrict reconsideration, please raise your red card. Thank you, please put them down. Those opposed to restricting reconsideration, please raise your red card. Find that the motion to restrict reconsideration carries. Yes, 77. No, 31. I find that Article 5 as amended carries. I believe there is a motion to restrict reconsideration. Mr. Crozier has submitted a motion uh, that the vote previously taken uh, not be subject to reconsideration. Um, and that's pursuant to a state statute, RSA 40 colon 10, uh, subdivision 1. Is there a second for that motion? Nancy Dion. Nancy Dion. And just so I understand, it's to, to affect Article 5 only. Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion to restrict reconsideration on Article 5? I'm going to ask for, um, uh, unless there is any debate, I don't think there will be, those in favor, Ms. Leopold? Um, just a question, can you please um, explain what restrict means in this purpose? The question is, what does it mean to restrict reconsideration? This is a legislative body. Um, we don't follow strict Roberts rules of order anymore. Um, but one of, the, one of the choices that a body can make is it's say at 10 o'clock, they vote to approve the uh, town budget. And at 1 o'clock, um, uh, the people left in the hall say, hey, I have a great idea. We move to reconsider our vote on Article 5. Um, that is permitted uh, under our normal rules of procedure. What um, a motion to restrict reconsideration does is to say uh, that later on in the meeting, we can't change our minds. We ready for a vote? Those in favor of the motion to restrict reconsideration, please raise your red card. Thank you. Please put them down. Those opposed to restricting reconsideration, please raise your red card. Find that the motion to restrict reconsideration carries. Mr. Perl. I'll make a motion to call or out of order. Okay, moving forward. Um, I, I hate to be a stickler for moderator's rules, but would you please write that down? Um, so Mr. Crozier has... <laughs> Mr. Crozier has made a motion to take Article 14 out of order. Uh, that is the article that, that was the petition board article that relates to um, funding road um, maintenance in the town of Rollinsville. Is there a second to the motion to take Article 14 out of order? Mr. Dion is the second. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. I appreciate your courtesy. Um, so, motion by Mr. Crozier, seconded by Mr. 
Dio to take Article 14 out of order. Is there any question about what that would require you to do? A yes vote is let's talk about Article 14 now. A no vote is leave it where it is. We'll talk about it when we get there. Those in favor of moving Article 14 up and talking about it now, please raise your red card. Thank you. Please put your cards down. Those opposed to moving up Article 14, please raise your red card. I find that, our, that the motion to move up consideration of Article 14 carries. So we are in debate um, on Article where Actually, we need a motion to move Article 14 to the floor. Is there a motion to move Article 14 to the floor? I make a motion. Uh, motion by Mr. Coons and seconded by Ms. Mr. Crozier to move Article 14 to the floor. Is there somebody who wishes to speak uh, and introduce Article 14? I do, um, my practice is to invite petitioners to make a presentation as I invite the select board to make a presentation. I was not successful in finding somebody to do that. Is there somebody who wishes to speak to Article 14? <coughs> uh, then Ms. Hewitt. Thank you. So as, as we stated earlier, uh, because when we were successful, thank you, in restoring the $250,000 back to the operating budget, <clears throat> the board would like to uh, recommend to the legislative body here today that we amend this board article to reduce the amount to $1. That preserves the purpose of maintaining roads, and yet it serves to uh, not add that to the tax base. So we recommend reducing the warrant to $1. Bill Irving, Rollins Road, uh, move to reduce this article to one dollar.
The motion to restrict reconsideration passes. Article 6, to purchase a service truck for the Rollinsburg Highway Department. Um, will anyone move this article to the floor? The discussion of uh, Ms. Knowles and seconded by Mr. Irvin. I recognize Ms. Lavoy uh, Cairns to introduce Article 6. Article 6 was um, presented to us um, through the new highway department staff and um, we did not purchase the vehicle that was passed last year. Um, the select board chose not to. Um, this truck um, is a utility truck as well um, and it would allow us to right size our um, trucks. Um, what that means is that some of our trucks are just too big for our tiny roads. So, including my road. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do is have the highway department, um, um, if you haven't met them, George is our agent and Ed, is, Ed Walsh is our full-time, um, come up and speak about the truck itself. I believe this is a picture of an idea of what they would like and why they would like it. So, George and Ed. So it's just 42. What happened to the 
20,000 from last year. Is that just in the CIP for another use? Okay, so a question through the moderator from Ms. Leopold. Uh, to, I believe to Ms. Hewitt, what will happen to a sum that was appropriated in the previous year? Oh, I'm sorry, to a select board member of the boy Karen. Cards, I apologize. That's okay. Um, we did not buy the truck last year. Um, the 20,000 stayed in CIP. Um, and so to withdraw the 42,000 from the capital improvement reserve fund that is already there established for a vehicle purpose. Okay. Is there further debate or discussion on Article 6? Hearing none, I find that we're ready for a vote. Article 6 is a proposal to purchase a service truck for the Rollinsford Highway Department. A yes vote is let's buy the truck. A no vote is let's not buy the truck. Uh, let's try it first by card. Uh, those in favor of adopting Ward Article 6, please raise your red card. Thank you. You may lower them. Those opposed to adopting Article 6, please raise your red card. And I can declare the vote. Uh, Article 6 is adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Department. Article 7, to purchase a roadside mowing attachment for the Rollinsford Highway Department. Uh, and again, will someone move this to the floor for discussion? Mr. Urban? Move to accept. Is there a second? I'll second. And I'm Sean Glidden. Sean Glidden, thank you. I recognize Mr. Rollo of the uh, Select Board to introduce this article. Good morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, yes, my pleasure to, 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 to speak to Article 7. Um, over the years, um, we have subcon we've contracted the roadside mowing out on, on town roads um, to a number of people. Um, they're all either not doing it, they're all not doing it, actually. Um, we found ourselves this past year not having enough money budgeted um, to cover the cost. Oh, after we found someone, and then that person's vehicle broke down and then couldn't do it in the end. Um, what we're proposing is that the town purchase their own um, mowing equipment that would attach to um, to the uh, bobcat uh, that we use uh, for sidewalk maintenance and other associated work in the town. Um, we noticed that it's $12,000. That is approximately three and a half, four years worth of uh, the budget of allowance for roadside mowing. So within three and a half to four years, we would have already paid for, for this equipment. We have a very, very capable road crew. Uh, you have met two of them. Uh, they have a few uh, part-time assistants as well. Um, our new road agent has assured us that this is something that can be done in the house, which I think is very refreshing. We should all be very grateful for uh, the level of work that Mr. Uh, Mr. Gilman and his crew are doing for us. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Basically, just to, to mow the sides of the road, um, and we would be using our own equipment instead of subcontracting out, or contracting out rather than someone else. I, sh I should also mention that the money is in, would be coming directly from the CIP. That's money already in there, so it wouldn't be coming from, um, from tax aid. Questions and comments on the board article? Seven. All right. So a yes vote on board Article Seven is to um, yes to raise and appropriate the sum of twelve thousand dollars to buy a mowing attachment. The no is it's not by the mowing attachment. We'll try it first with the cards. Those in favor of adopting board Article Seven, please raise your card. Thank you. Please lower those cards. Those opposed to adopting board Article Seven, please raise your card. I find the board article seven passes. Thank you. Board article eight to purchase a police cruiser for the Rollinsford Police Department. Uh, again, a motion to move it to the board. Mr. Irving, a second. And I recognize again Mr. Rowling. I'm happy to speak to um, We have a, um, a cycle where we purchase uh, new police vehicles uh, every um, two years. Um, 
try to keep the mileage down and the resale value higher. So I'm going to trade it in. Um, I'm happy to, to, um, to allow the police chief to discuss this. This is a, a program that's been going on, or a process that's been going on for a number of years. Uh, and this is the year that we will be requesting to, uh, to buy the vehicles. The money will also be coming from money that is already in the uh, CIP fund, but will not have a direct impact on taxation. Happy to any questions. Any questions or comments on board Article 8? I think we're ready for the vote. Those, a yes vote on board Article 8 is yes, we buy the cruiser. A, a no vote on board Article 8 is no, we don't buy a cruiser. We'll try with the cards first. Those in favor of adopting Warrant Article 8 to purchase a cruiser, please put your card up. Please lower your cards. Thank you. Those opposed to adopting Ward Article 8, please raise your card. And I am able to declare it. Ward Article 8 is adopted. Ward Article 9, Capital Improvement Reserve Fund. And again, I would be looking for a motion to bring in Ward Article 9 to the floor. Mr. Hurry, helping me out as always to keep things moving. I appreciate that. Mr. Hurry, Ms. Salvati seconding. And I recognize uh, Select Board Chair Ms. Hewer. Thank you. So this, um, the prior three warrant articles that you've just um, approved were funded by the Capital Improvement Project Plan. So they themselves will have no impact on our tax rate on the calculation at the end of the year. But now, now comes the warrant article where we put some money into the Capital Improvement Project Plan to keep it going. This is one of our major planning tools. We have three of them. The CIP plan for capital projects uh, going forward 10 years. We have our spending projections, uh, just I guess financial projections, going forward 10 years. These are all on the website and back there. And we have our 10-year road service management plan that we use to plan out our <coughs> road service expenses. So there is currently, uh, if you look at your voter's guide, have that with you, there is, Currently, I'll find it, a balance of $255,000 in the fund today. Now that's before we take out any money for the purchases that you uh, just approved. But if you look at the net of these purchases, and there won't be any others <clears throat> in ensuing more articles, it's, they're $99,000. We're asking for $178,200. So there's a net increase to the CIP balance of $80,000. So we did a good this year, and next year we'll be using withdrawing some for next year's projects. Why the sum of $178,200? It's a little weird. I guess we're a slave to the numbers, and if you look at our CIP, that's the number that came out at the bottom of the, of the column. Uh, we didn't round up or down, so $178,200. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Is there a debate or question on adopting Ward Article 9? Further question or comment on Ward Article 9? 
And Mr. Codd, I apologize for not seeing that you wanted to speak. All right, I think we're ready to call the vote on Warrant Article 9. A yes vote is to raise and appropriate $178,200 to put in the Town Capital Improvement Reserve Fund. So yes means put that money in the Reserve Fund, no means don't put the money in the Reserve Fund. Those in favor of adopting Ward Article 9, please raise your red card. Thank you. Please lower your cards. Those opposed to adopting Ward Article 9, please raise your red card. And I find, uh, am able to find and declare that Ward Article 9 is passed. Ward Article 10, the Culvert Repair and Replacement Reserve Fund. Uh, and what is our pleasure? Do we want to move that to the floor for discussion, Mr. Irving? I'm just going to fall over there now. And Ms. Leopold. I recognize Mr. Rowe. Good morning, everyone. Again, I hope that I'm not trying to, everyone thinks I'm trying to mislead it with the balance of the CIP fund. But on Warren Article number 10, um, it's a separate, separate um, reserve fund. You need to think about these reserve funds as, as savings <coughs> for, for, for future projects. Um, my second year on the select board, we were met with a, uh, a rather expensive surprise in the middle of our year. We had a $48,000 surprise, I think it was on the end, to fix a culvert on Partridge Lane. It was more than that in the end, I think that was the first part of it, but it was a very expensive fix because we hadn't planned on it. And we learned from that, well, that board and, and board moving forward, this board included, have learned from the past mistakes that it might be a good idea to start planning for some of these infrastructure projects. So that's why we see the culvert replacement fund, reserve fund. There are a number of uh, culverts in this town that need to be replaced. Now, I'm not talking about the small little culverts like you, you know, that are, what you may see at the end of your driveway, although we're not responsible for those, but um, there are other ones, like on Sligo Road, for instance, there is a small uh, culvert that needs to be replaced, it looks like a speed bump at the moment. Uh, our ha highway crew can fix that themselves, which also is very good news because that didn't always happen in the past either. So Mr. Joe and his crew will go out and fix that. Slightly down the road on Sligo Road, there are, on either direction actually, there's one that looks like a bridge and could be classified as a bridge, but it's a culvert. And then there's another one further up that's a double culvert, two pipes on top of one another. They are, if you go to that double one, it's failing, or it's been the process of failing. You can see where the road is set. That will need to be replaced. By putting money aside into a savings account, we are able to draw her off of that savings account instead of coming to you and saying we need $50,000 or whatever the magic number is to fix that culvert that year. We can say we still need that money, but we were smart enough to put it aside, as I think we all try to do with our home accounts when possible. Uh, and we take the money out of that, or we'll be coming and saying we need $50,000 from direct taxation. But to me, it makes a lot more sense to try to save when we can. And that's why we're suggesting that we put $10,000 into the culvert reserve fund. I'm happy to answer any questions. Right. Questions or comments on Article 10 of the Board of the Culvert Reserve Fund? Ms. Neal? Is there currently a prioritized list that the Select Board is working off of to determine which culverts get done? Question to the moderator from Ms. Leopold about whether there's a list of priorities. At the moment, there are only two that we are aware of, uh, and they're both the ones that we, I just discussed on Sligo Road. Uh, I, I'm sure every resident of this town recognizes that, especially on the road to Europe, that there may be others. As I said, there may be small ones that we can repair in-house with our, our very able, capable highway crew. Um, others may maybe not. I know that Mr. Gilmet was going to, if he hasn't already, he's been a little busy with the case the last few weeks anyway, with some story. But um, was going to do an assessment, and I know that um, we had an assessment done previously um, through our um, the SRPC, the Peter Stratton Regional Planning Commission, which are the folks that helped us with our 10-year um, 
road and <coughs> thing. I'm staying corrected. It wasn't an assessment, it was more of an inventory. Mr. Gilmet, who um, I um, have full faith and confidence and can do an assessment um, of that inventory. He may find there are things on the, that are not on the inventory that need to be added. So, this is a very long way of saying there are only two that we're really aware of at the moment that are of major concern. They both happen to be on Sligo Road, but that's not to say that there aren't going to be others, and that's why we're trying to plan ahead. Further debate or comment on board our as Ms. Heward. Thank you, um, Michael, for the presentation. I do want to say, I'd like to pat all of us on the back and say that we have been, uh, we have been working on this with you know, the town's help. So we have fixed Partridge Lane, which was one of the expensive ones as, when it collapsed. And last year, we, uh, as you recall, we had a, uh, a, a, an authorization from you, the town, to, uh, to borrow funds so that we could repair some of the uh, other major ones that we had identified. So we have done Pine Street, we have done Willie Street, and we have repaired the storm drain uh, in the lower mills that uh, exits at the, at the river. So we have been working at this, and the only two remaining that are large enough to merit this are the two on Sligo Road, unless there are some that we're not aware of yet. Is there further discussion on Ward Article 10? It looks like we're ready for a vote. A yes vote on Ward Article 10 is to vote in favor of placing $10,000 in that public repair reserve fund. A vote no means let's not put that money in. Um, we'll try it with the red cards. Those in favor of adopting Ward Article 10, please raise your card. Thank you. Please lower your cards. Those opposed to adopting Ward Article 10, please raise your red card. And I may be fine to declare that Ward Article 10 is passed. Article 11, the Conservation Land Trust Capital Reserve Fund, Mr. Irving. <laughs> and Ms. Ward. I recognize. Um, Select Board Chair, Ms. Hewitt. Thank you. So this is a perennial warrant article. We have a reserve fund that uh, currently has a balance of, uh, I think it's 155000 and some change. I have to keep flipping my glasses on, but if you have a voter's guide, it does say the balance. 135, sorry, it has $135,558 in it today. So this is the fund <coughs> that we would use with town's approval should a conservation piece of land that might be suitable for conservation turn up and should we the town uh, want to expend some of that money in order to purchase it. So this just increases that fund by $10,000. There, there is no impact on taxation here because we have a, a fund that exists uh, called a land use change tax account and anytime uh, a, a property owner takes land out of current use, there's a tax associated with that, and we put that tax into that account, it stays there, nothing happens to it unless we, the town, decide to do something with it. So this would be a decision to take 10000 out of that account and to put it in the, the conservation land fund, if, if you all approve it. Conservation uh, to do a, an appraisal or a survey of or the like. If 
But if that opportunity came up, and it hasn't come up since I've been serving on the board, but should it come up, this Warren article allows us to take $5,000 out of the fund that you just added another $10,000 to. So this is the approval that I said we need to do in order to remove money from that reserve fund. It would be only up to $5,000, and it would only be for the purpose of funding an appraisal or a survey or uh, something of the like in order to uh, with the end result that something perhaps would come into conservation. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Is there a debate or discussion on Warren Article 12, the land survey and related expense? Seeing none, I find that we're ready for a vote. A yes vote is to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 to finance the land surveys and land surveys and related expenses. Uh, as further described in the uh, article, a no vote is to not <coughs> raise and appropriate that $5,000. If you're in favor of adopting Warren Article 12, please raise your red card. Thank you very much. Please lower your card. Those opposed to adopting Warren Article 12, please raise your red card. And I'm able to find that Warren Article 12 is adopted. Warren Article 13 relates to a house, the adoption of a housing standards ordinance. Mr. Irving, um, and um, Mr. Wardway. And I recognize Mr. Rowe. Thank you. Um, this, um, this is probably the, 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 the one more article that I'm, I'm most excited about, to be honest with you. Uh, we've been working on this for, for, for quite a while now. Um, and I think, with all fairness, we should be thanking um, a previous board um, several years ago that first started this process, uh, but it never brought it to town meeting to actually adopt them. Um, Broder, when he was our welfare um, director, whatever we were calling it at the time, helped craft these. I mean, they were borrowed from the town city of Dover, and we applaud them for bringing them forward. Um, we are trying to finish uh, the process now. We have amended them slightly so they reflect more of a, of a town than, than, a, um, than a city uh, landscape. But basically, I think when you drive through our town, I think most, um, most of the time people will be very happy. When you come to the village, most of the time we'll be pretty happy. We think it's a nice little call it old industrial mill village. Um, then there are certain properties where to call the owner slumlord would be charitable. Um, where there are rat infested apartments, where there are apartments without the heat, where they stick in a um, um, uh, propane or, or kerosene heater or electric heater and call it a bedroom. We are better than that. We should be better. One, it's not safe. In a number of cases, not sanitary. There are a number of properties where they, they just started dumps in their backyard or in their front yard in some cases. It's not just the village. There are a number of uh, properties uh, that would not meet um, those standards, you can't use your backyard as a garbage pit. It's not fair to your neighbors to have rat infestation or other vermin coming in. Um, currently, we don't have standards like that. There are some state statutes that can assist, but really we need a municipal ordinance. And the town meeting, at least this year, is the only body that can do that. Um, this is not the, um, Mike Roller is going to come and knock on your doors and measure your windows or things. Trust me, I no desire to do that, nor do I think any other member of the select board. But if a complaint is brought, especially a safety issue, um, we need to have the tools at our disposal to hold uh, specifically landlords, really, accountable for the condition of their properties. I would remind you also that if you live next to it, your values of your property are brought down because you live next to the garbage site. Um, I don't think anyone wants that either. Um, so, and I would hope the ordinance is in the back. It's, it's, it's quite lengthy. Um, I'd invite you to take a look at it if you haven't already. It's been available for quite some time now online. We have printed copies as well. But really, this is to give the select board some tools to, um, to empower our health officer and uh, to save some money also. You know, there are, we have uh, we've had over the years a number of, um, of welfare cases uh, that have cost more money because of um, some of the deficiencies in the property that it probably should have cost the town. Um, so it could help there as well. So it, it, it's a multi-pronged approach really to try to uh, 
clean up um, some problem areas, and I think you, I don't want to name them specifically, but I think if you drive around town, you may notice. Um, and uh, I hope you'll support the order. I hope you answer any questions. It is quite lengthy, so I hope you have a chance to take a look at it. Thank you, Mr. Rubble. Questions, comments, debate on board article 13. Ms. Leopold. I just have a couple of questions um, regarding this one. Um, how are complaints sent to the correct authority um, and the funding for it? Does the funding for enforcement and so forth and cleanup have to come out of tax dollars or is it funded some other way? And the availability of the um, house ordinance, will they remain online? Will paper copies be available somewhere? Question through the moderator from Ms. Leopold regarding the complaint process, the funding authority, and whether it will remain on. Charlie, you need to sit and not go far, Charlie, because you're going to remember all that. I'm not going to remember all the questions. Okay, let's start from the, the last question first. Uh, yes, there, there, we have been, as a board, um, committed to, to having all of the ordinances uh, available online so folks can uh, access them. Um, that's something that I think we, we, we strive for all of our ordinances so we have an open fair process so people know what the rules of the game are. Um, Second question was funding. Funding. Um, we, we currently have a health officer that we already fund. We currently already have a building inspector that we already fund. This is just giving them the tools to complete their, the tasks that we asked them to do. And so I, I think that believe further, additional funding that would be needed. The further question was whether the cleanup will be paid for by the town or the landowner. Well, there are... The landowner, uh, down, not going to do it. I know there are there are uh, I mean, there is a means. The town attorney can, can correct me. Uh, to um, if the town had to pay some of the cleanup costs, there is a way to um, to um, the mechanism to 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 uh, charge the landowner, whether it's, whether it's through lien, whatever. There is a process to do that. So no, there shouldn't. This isn't an additional uh, burden on the taxpayers. If anything, I think it would be helping the taxpayers because. Uh, Increasing the, the value potentially of your property, and then you would, your property would be, would be worth more. So that means the, the larger tax base, so you're, in theory, your taxes should be going down to get it spread out more. But, and the third and final question was about the complaint process. Ah, yes. So it would set up a um, three, four member board that um, could, could assess them, uh, the complaints. Uh, that would be a member of the select board. Uh, but you, you could still bring, you would still bring them to the select board, the complaints, but it would be made up of the building inspector, uh, health officer, uh, fire, uh, the, you know, the public safety folks, and a member of the select board uh, to, um, to determine whether or not it, it is a, um, a viable complaint. Um, this is not intended to uh, turn the things into a witch hunt. <laughs> this is not the intention, folks. This is to, uh, again, to give tools to the folks that you, that you make the complaint to to empower us to actually enforce uh, uh, what I would call uh, limited minimum housing standards, which is what it's called. So. Well, we're in debate on Article 13. Mr. Kellerman? Hi. Yep, that's fine. Brian Kellerman, Ross Road. I, I am also uh, a uh, landlord in town as well as being a homeowner and I just wanted on record that I fully support these housing standards. I, I've read it cover to cover and uh, all of my properties uh, meet or exceed everything in there. I, there are several properties around mine that don't and uh, they generate problems for the adjacent properties. Uh, if you've got uh, an a, uh, apartment building that doesn't have trash removal, I, and those people are going to find some place to put their trash. And it's going to be maybe in their backyard, maybe in somebody else's backyard, maybe they'll find the nearest dumpster. Uh, you know, it's the same thing with the, if they've got a rat infestation in one apartment. The buildings in the village are all very close together and that kind of thing spreads. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I, I, 
thank you. You raised a, a, a great point, Brian. Thank you for, as, as a landlord coming forward. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. All the complaints we've had have been from absentee landlords. And none of them have been from residents of the town. So um, take that for forward, I guess. But thank you for coming you know, forward. I think we're ready for a vote on board Article 13. I don't want to be premature, but okay. Um, a yes vote on uh, board Article 13 is to um, formally adopt the Housing Standards Ordinance as proposed by the Select Board. A vote of no means let's not adopt this ordinance, but we'll do something else later. Uh, we'll try it with the red cards. Those in favor of adopting board Article 13 related to the Housing Standard Ordinance, Thank you. Please lower your card. Those opposed to adopting the housing standards ordinance, please raise your red card. And I'm able to declare it uh, as uh, Ward Article 13 is adopted. I'm going to jump past Ward Article 14 because that's previously been considered and I believe is subject to a motion to restrict reconsideration. So we're on to Ward Article 15. Just, uh, and this is to change our road name. Uh, and I recognize. Uh, Ms. Lavoie Karen Carnes. Um, this was um, voted, I believe, last, last year um, from Cowan Drive to Cedar Lane, um, but it became an issue with the safety of fire um, police. Um, and so this warrant article is to change it back to Cowan Drive. <laughs> it was never changed um, this year. Um, to Cedar Lane, and so we just have to officially make it back to Calvin Drive. Thank you. Is there a question or comment on Board Art 15 regarding a change in road name? Hearing none, I think we're ready for the vote. A yes vote on Board Art 15 would change the name <coughs> Cedar Lane back to Calvin Drive. Uh, so a yes vote is to do that, and no vote is to keep the name of that road as it currently stands. Those in favor of adopting warrant article 15 to change the road name, please raise your red card. Thank you. Please lower your red cards. Those opposed to adopting warrant article 15, please raise your red card. And I'm able to find and declare that warrant article 15 is adopted. Warrant article 16. Uh, is to establish a historical committee expenses <coughs> trust fund that is by petition and is uh, Mr. Irving moves it to the floor for debate. Is there a second to move it to the floor? Um, and I was able to, to reach uh, one of the petitioners who agreed to um, uh, introduce this board article to you. I recognize uh, Mr. Benedetto to introduce board article 16. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Chris Benedetto here, 426 Washington Street. Um, I am the chairperson of the current incarnation of the, uh, the Historical Committee, which we're looking to get back into action. We've already started to do that. Um, we're really trying to expand the town's appreciation for our own history. We may be a small town, but Ronsford really has an amazing history. Uh, it's one of the best preserved mill villages in the United States. Um, it has one of the most historical landscapes um, in, in, the, uh, in New Hampshire. Um, and what we're really trying to do is help broaden appreciation and um, programming. Uh, we have the, the Colonel Paul Wentworth House, which does a fantastic job, but I know from being involved with them also that that is a, a really up to that organization for that structure. What we want to do is point out other uh, historical areas of note within Rollinsford, for example. And, uh, and later in April, we're going to be doing a, um, a Salmon Falls Village historical tour led by Peter Dusha, uh, who which we'll be sending out information about. But what this article allows us to do is to um, maintain the funds that we raise through fundraising, like selling magics of the new town emblem at, at events like today, Family Fun Day, and so on. Um, it will allow us to be more self-sufficient um, and through fundraising. Uh, some of the other projects we'd like to do are to 
help organize, catalog, and, and properly preserve a lot of the historical documents that are in town hall as well. Um, and really, this article will allow us to do some of those projects. And also, hopefully the historical committee will continue on to the future, uh, whether I'm involved in it or other people. We'd love to get m m many more townspeople involved in the committee, whether they serve on or as volunteers. So um, I hope you'll see your way to approve this article. It will help us be more self-sufficient as an organization and use the money we raise for uh, promoting our all its history. Thank you. Discussion or debate on board article 16. I'm sorry? I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, oh, look, the select board had recommended this Warren article. Uh, every, well, the last couple of years now, the historical committee um, has been raising money. They've been trying to sell magnets, and now they have an idea, maybe t-shirts, uh, that sort of thing, to, to as, as Chris said, to raise awareness. But from an accounting point of view, they don't have an account. They can just put the money in where it just stays there. The, the, the select board would have to... Um, either encumber the funds or, you know, we have to keep an accounting, okay, they had, they raised $68 last year. Well, it would just stay in our general fund instead of going into this special reserve fund. Uh, the, the select board also over the last several years has appropriated as part of the town budget, I think it's $300, something small like that, to help, um, to sort of seed money to help with some of these um, walking tours and to raise the awareness. That also would be would, would be non lapsing so we go into this fund, so we don't have to remember. Okay, well we gave them that three hundred. Now we're going to have to give them another. We, the town meeting or the, the deliberative session, and then the, the voters uh, in the next process uh, gave that money again. Uh, it's just a better way to do an accounting. So the money it stays in a separate fund. Uh, you would also be giving the select board um, the authority to take that money out. So when People like Chris, the chair, or whoever it is, comes and says, "Okay, we have three hundred and ten dollars in there. We need two hundred because we want to put out a flyer and we want to buy some more T-shirts to restock. We don't have to wait a whole another year to have a Warner." So it, it, it's just a, a much cleaner process. And we have we have special reserve funds for a whole host of things. We have to the trustees of the trust funds to uh, to uh, to watch the accounts. So we hope you can support the Warner. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. We're in the debate discussion on Ward Article 16. I think we're ready for a vote. Uh, a yes vote is to establish this uh, historical committee expendable trust fund uh, and raise and appropriate $350 to it. A no vote means we won't create that fund. Those in favor of adopting Ward Article 16, please raise your uh, red card. Thank you. Please lower your red card. Those opposed to adopt the Warren Art 16, please raise your red card. And I'm able to find and declare that Warren Art 16 passes. Warren Article 17, to form a committee to explore adopting a town manager form of government. And I'm going to correct the procedural error I made on the last one. And see that Mr. Irving moves it to the floor as our second to move his goals. And uh, a petitioner, Ms. Hansen, has uh, at, uh, agreed to introduce this article to the uh, legislators of this bill. Surprisingly, for somebody who supports the select board 100%, you should probably be surprised that I would introduce this particular article. However, this is an article to form a town manager form of government as a possibility for Rollinsburg. It's not to form it directly, but it is for the purpose of forming the committee to determine whether it's a helpful idea for the town of Rollinsburg. As I say, I'm a firm believer and a very strong supporter of our select board. However, I'm looking at other towns in the state of New Hampshire have adopted other methods of dealing with their town government. Part of them have chosen either town manager or perhaps town administrative forms of government. Town manager form of government actually, part of the duties of the select board would go to the manager. In a town administrator, that would not happen. We're only asking for a committee to study this because, after all, over the past several years, I don't know how 
I'm sure the people on the select board realize, but not many of you may realize, there has been just a plethora of federal and state regulations, laws, and everything else that have to be complied with. It's becoming more and more difficult for the town to uh, comply with the rules of the Department of Revenue Administration. They have new portals opening up that have to do things with that. We have issues regarding assessing properties. We have issues that have to be dealt with, with um, making sure that human resources uh, of the town are being properly managed. There are proper procedures and policies in place. It just goes on and on. We have the stormwater uh, issues that we have to deal with. We have to make sure that we're complying with all federal, state, and local regulations when it comes to uh, the transfer station, when it comes to just almost every aspect of our government. As a result of that, it seems like it might not be a bad idea to be looking at a study committee who would have hearings to try to find out from the stakeholders involved whether or not it would be a viable form to look at, perhaps, a town manager, or they may find that something else is more appropriate. But I think it would be helpful to have some kind of help for a select board. They have a difficult time enough as it is. They spend many hours just doing the usual things that they always have done. For instance, they're doing the budget, they're doing the health and safety regulations for the town, et cetera, et cetera. So in that respect, we're hoping that perhaps looking at this as a study committee that would give a report um, by early, uh, by the end of the summer, basically, to try to see if um, we should be looking at some other way to help our select board. Thank you. We're in discussion and debate on Warren Article 17. Mr. Pellerin? Yes. Uh, I was just wondering whether this committee is going to cost the town uh, anything uh, as far as money or resources. Question to the moderator from Ms. Hanson, will this committee require money or resources? We don't expect that to be the case. Further discussion and debate on Ward Article 17. If you're ready for the vote, a yes vote on Ward Article 17 is to, a yes vote is to agree to form a committee to explore adopting a town manager form of government and to, I believe, receive its report. A no vote signifies that we don't believe this committee should be established at this time. Try for the red cards. Those in favor of adopting Warren Article 17, please raise your red card. Please lower your red card. Those opposed to adopting Warren Article 17, please raise your red card. Okay, so tellers, uh, please lower your cards. Um, and what we'll do is I'll ask the tellers to move into place. Um, we'll change the process here only to the extent that I'll ask you to raise and hold up your card so that we can be sure that we cross-check our counts. Summarizing for you again, a yes vote is to form this committee, a no vote is to not adopt, not to form this committee at this time. Those in favor of adopting Ward Article 17, please raise your red card. Please lower your cards. 
Those opposed to adopting Ward Article 17, please raise your red card. And Some of us had family at the first one, 
Um, but we're all here for the last one. And um, we should be mindful of that, that we will be under a new process, but we should, we should probably never forget that this was an opportunity today to, uh, to assemble and have a conversation as neighbors that is a conversation that will not be had unless uh, the, the system has changed. That there will be a new form of government that uh, is similar, but it's not, not the same. So I thought I would be remiss if I didn't remind us and just say thank you to 169 years worth of residents that gathered at the town hall, and now the new town hall, and now the gymnasium of the great school that helped maintain this town and, and make it what it is today. So I think we should all give ourselves a round of applause for being here. And
I'm going to read some more, and then I'm going to say I, pause, and you'll all state your own name again, uh, and then we'll say I do. So I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God. I, state your name, do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties incumbent on me and say the name of your position. According to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this Constitution and law of the state of New Hampshire, so help me God. All right. Uh, let's give you a round of applause.
what did we accomplish at this meeting Thank you. today? One thing that we reduced the budget from last year by, and this is out of, on page 41 of the town report, but I just want to highlight this, that we re reduced the budget by a million ninety-five thousand three hundred forty-seven dollars today. However, and it's always a sad thing that follows, what have we done to the money that's got to be raised by taxes this coming year? Last year we raised eight hundred thousand uh, five hundred sixty-seven dollars. This coming year now, what we agreed on today, according to the book, is nine hundred and one thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars. Or otherwise, we increase the amount that we're going to the taxpayers are going to have to raise next year by a hundred and four four fifty two thousand dollars. So a hundred thousand dollars increase in what we're going to pay in taxes. That's what's in your report. I'm just reporting and you and you wait in correct But that comes out to eight percent a little better increase. If you say that's not correct, that's what's in the book. It says that's to be raised by taxes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Jansen. Um, I'm going to recognize Mr. Rich. Thank you. So, um, Ed, if you look at the page in the yellow book that talks about uh, the tax rates, you will see that the tax ever paid for by the town in the tax year of 2017 was 900000 and something. The tax ever this year is 900000 and something. So whatever, whatever, uh, so that we are keeping things level. You will not be seeing an 8% increase in tax effort on the municipal side. You will be seeing level funded on the municipal side. Okay, I'm going to um, call this part of the uh, conversation to close and ask that Mr. Um, Jansen and Ms. Heward continue that conversation uh, at another date and time. One last item of business to lawfully come before the meeting. Uh, those of you who have who've managed to stay here this long, um, one of the provisions in the statute is for an assistant moderator, and um, I believe strongly that we need to train a new generation uh, of people uh, to take on the responsibilities of serving as town moderator. There's a fair amount of election law uh, and uh, governance uh, that needs to be learned. So not to, not to um, insult people who are like my age and so forth, I'd especially be interested in having a younger person, a man or woman, who's interested in this process. I would, uh, there's some wonderful training materials, and I'd be delighted to uh, invite somebody into this uh, into this process. So with that, uh, I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Uh, okay, and those in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, thank you all very much for your.